Uh, it was a bigger step than expected from uh, FCS to SEC, obviously. Um, you know, I kind of learned that during fall camp. Um, uh, and playing, you know, through the first games, I kind of assessed that too. You know, I got snaps here and there, um, kind of rotated with X um, every other series. Um, but as the season went on, you know, you you learn certain things, you gain ex more experience, especially in this league. Um, and so, you know, it's it kind of, you know, football's always been a little bit of second nature to me, and it just took a little bit getting used to, especially to the game of the speed, and um, yeah, you know, all sorts of like that. And just looking back on some of the games you played against, you know, Georgia, you know, like one of the best defenses maybe of all time, what, what do you think when you look back on that experience? Yeah. <laughs> It's great. When I go back home, all my friends ask me the same question. Um, you know, the, Georgia, it was a great experience, you know, because I, you know, in the back of your mind, you're like, oh, can we play with them, you know, whatnot. Um, and it's really, a, it's either a confidence booster or it's not. And, um, you know, it kind of showed that, you know, our offensive line was pretty, we're, we're really good. And, um, and to assess if we can compete with Georgia, you know, as you said, they're such a powerhouse, especially on their defensive side. Um, and, you know, reflecting back on it, we did pretty well um, for ourselves. And we're only con going to continue to get better because we already got that experience facing them. Um, and especially, you know, great teams such as Tennessee and, you know, every, basically every league in this conference is pretty good. So, um, we, you know, we can assess and, oh, sorry, and evaluate, um, you know, as offensive line and, coaches, player to coach, and we just move on week to week. So. Uh, Georgia had three NFL defensive tackles. Who was the toughest one to block? <sighs> um, number 88, I think his last name is Carter. Yep. You know, Jordan Davis, obviously, he's big time. But, um, you know, I thought uh, number 88, he was, he was very well, just because how well he can move for his size. So that was I was pretty shocking, you know, because you see on film, obviously, but seeing it on film and doing it, out on the field, it's completely different. Can you, oh, you're, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. You're uh, good. Sorry, my bad. Uh, can you kind of take us through uh, your your recruitment, you know, from Montana State to Mizzou uh, last year? Like the recruitment process like, of like me uh, transferring? Yeah, go, going from Montana State to Mizzou, yeah, the, tra the transfer process. Yeah, you know, I just graduated from my undergrad in business marketing, and uh, you know, it was, it was just kind of something I needed to change, you know, for myself and for my family, and so. Um, I took the step and leap of faith, as you will, and um, landed some big time offers. And, you know, I've kind of wanted, you know, seeing these big schools on TV, you know, at, FC, at FCS College, you're like, you know, I wonder if I could play there or not, you know. And, you know, I always knew I could, but I just wanted kind of to prove myself as well to my family if I could. And, and so I did, and I got a couple big time offers, as I said. and. Um, it's been great ever since. So, uh, you, you kind of planned the starting job uh, midway through that season. You know, how did it feel, you know, to to prove to, to your family and to people around it that you, that you can you could do it? You know, it was reassuring for sure, um, especially all the hard work I've done throughout my entire life through football. Um, and so it was, like I said, it was reassuring. But um, at the end of the day, you know, I'm still playing football, right? And I, I'm out here to have fun. Um, you know, it's pretty tough going from the FCS level to SEC and trying to start, especially at the O-line position. I mean, anywhere else, you know, there's a lot of competition and, you know, a little bit more versatility. But O-line, it's so physical, like freaking natures, like you said, like <laughs> Jordan Davis and uh, number 88 for Carter. Um, so, you know, you just kind of got to assess and really just kind of, Grind, <laughs> grind through anything. So, Connor, what, what's your what's your take on the quarterback battle this, this spring, and how much are you looking forward to kind of seeing it play out? I'm looking forward to it a lot. You know, we got some great quarterbacks in the room, um, and we'll we'll be interested to see who. And like I said earlier, that's what spring ball is for: assess and evaluate. Um, so I'm sure Drink is going to mix and mix and match and quarterbacks and whatnot, but. Um, you know, Brady Cook, in my eyes, Brady Cook saw a huge leap in step and leadership and in his game. Um, I said earlier, he was uh, actually coming into the offensive line meeting rooms and, you know, asking us, you know, should we do this? Like, what would help here, you know? 
And, you know, that's awesome. That's the leadership. That's the accountability that we need as a quarterback. But the experience of both guard and tackle, how do you think that versatility helps the entire offensive line? Oh, it helps tremendously. I mean, Coach Johnson, he does a great job of not just saying, hey, you're only playing here. You're only, you know, he's, he wants you to play everything, really. And like I said earlier, um, you know, versatility is great for the NFL. And you can play anywhere. Um, it, it's not a weakness for you if you have to go from left to right or, you know, tackle to guard. Um, and so I think Coach Johnson does a great job preparing us. Um, he does it in practice, and I've done it in games. Like So, um, you know, I think it's great that he does that, and it keeps you always working on your craft and uh, thinking. So. How have you seen your leadership personally develop here in the offseason? Um, you know, I had to take a step for sure. Um, you know, losing Mike and Case, that was kind of huge. They were huge leaders to our team, and especially in the offense line group. Um, you know, the offensive line group, as I said, we're the most experienced and we have, you know, we have a lot of depth in there. And so we kind of have to reflect and say, hey, we have to carry the team on our backs. You know, this is, the success is going to come from us, right? We have to be accountable to everyone. We have to be accountable to ourselves. So. Have you all talked about focus and mindset during spring ball? Say that again. Have you focused on focus and mindset? Have you guys talked about it? You guys being so leadership and depth heavy? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, as soon as we got back, we kind of were just all kind of talking about it. Um, but, you know, the mindset is still the same. You know, we're going to we're gonna lead this group like it's always been. Um, Mike and Case, they were just, you know, the extra for the, what the team is, more vocal-wise. Um, you know, and somebody in our room has to step up. You know, I think myself... Uh, has stepped up this spring as well as Javon and X. Um, but, you know, we don't, in my eyes, I don't want to see just one or two people leading. You know, I want everyone to have a say in the voice, Thanks, everyone buddy. to lead, everyone to be accountable. And I think that's what successful programs will be built on. Are you going to get the, the grill out anytime soon? And what's on the menu for, for spring camp? <laughs> Oh, we'll be interested. Hopefully another steak, you know, ribeye again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, just trying to lean out and eat healthier now. So. Oh, so things have changed a little bit? <laughs> yeah, shame, but more veggies, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> new year, new year, new year.